Welcome to Around Kansas. I'm Deb Goodrich. And I'm Michelle Martin. And you might wonder what that incredible rock formation is behind me. Well, that is the smallest state park in Kansas. That is the Mushroom Rock. And the Mushroom Rock kind of sits all by itself out there in Ellis County, or uh, excuse me, Ellsworth County. Sorry, sorry to all you people in Ellsworth. <laughs> but this is a uh, uh, just one example of some really incredible landscapes that Ellsworth County has. And behind me, I'm sure everyone sees that familiar uh, profile of the prairie dog. Remember the prairie dog, folks. Uh, it was the little animal that sat erect, barked, and whistled that so totally fascinated Lewis and Clark and their uh, members of the Corps of Discovery. They spent a couple of days trying to flood and smoke out prairie dog holes to capture them to send back to President Thomas Jefferson. And this is Prairie Dog State Park in Norton County. So the prairie dog I've always found fascinating. I, I love to, to watch them. And the first settlers to Kansas um, and, and to the West found them fascinating too. They, they were just such odd little animals and they were often supper for those settlers. And uh, they found that dog was quite good, you know, if it was cooked properly. So uh, <laughs> Michelle and I were just talking, I, I'm fascinated by watching the little guys. And one of the best prairie dog villages is actually out at Cheyenne Bottoms. And, you know, mm -hmm. they're not disturbed, but it's, uh, uh, this is also prairie dog villages are also when they're rounding up rattlesnakes. This is where they go because the prairie dog village is like a smorgasbord for mm -hmm. the snakes. And you would see, uh, it's kind of scary, you'd see all these little mm -hmm. skeletons lying around. So if you um, venture out to watch the prairie dogs, be sure to watch for the snakes. And as I told Michelle, I can't say too much where I'm located out in Western Kansas with all the farmers and ranchers that I'm actually a fan of prairie dogs because they are not, they are quite the nuisance, but thank goodness we have the Prairie Dog State Park to, uh, um, to honor that little creature. You know, Deb, um, today uh, for Friday Fun, we're talking about different state parks in Kansas. And now that we are seeing a lot of the COVID restrictions relaxing, the state parks in Kansas are a great way to take your family, get a road trip in, um, and get out and enjoy the outdoors, enjoy nature, and time with uh, one another, but also to see different parts of Kansas. And of course, Prairie Dog State Park is up there in Norton County. It's near Norton, the town of Norton, which is the county seat. And Prairie Dog State Park is unique um, with our state parks. They actually do some living history interpretation there. Uh, they have a one room schoolhouse, an adobe house. So they actually do some living history interpretation there, but you can camp and you can hike and you can do a lot of great things there with your family. And the fees are all very reasonable. Well, you can't camp at um, Mushroom State Park because there's just not enough room to put your pitch your tent or lay your sleeping bag down, but you can sure walk around at a time or two and you're going to be pretty close to some other sites that you might be able to camp at, like Canopolis Lake, you know, and places mm -hmm. around there, Horse Thief Canyon, uh, some great hiking places. But you got to make the effort to stop and see the Mushroom Rock because it, it is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it is our smallest state park. So you can check that one off your list and say that you were there. You can get bragging rights by, by visiting it. So Ellsworth County's got some uh, awesome tourism, you know, so check that out. And uh, like I said, check out Mushroom Rock and all the other places that you can enjoy some incredible scenery. Definitely. And you know, this is a great time to start thinking about your summer trips uh, and to start planning those out a little bit. And if you go to the website for the Kansas State Parks, they have a great breakdown of the fees involved. 
Um, actually, you can buy an annual vehicle pass. You can go ahead when you actually renew your license and your license plate, your tag, your registration. You have the option of adding on that vehicle pass at a reduced rate. So there are a lot of ways for you to be able to take advantage of uh, our state parks in Kansas and get out there and see our wonderful sunflower state. That's right. And there's so many that uh, are just, well, they're all outstanding. Like um, Lake Pomona, I have a lot of friends that are mm -hmm. uh, living down at Lake Pomona now, um, you know, nearby the, the state park. And that is so pretty. And again, close to a lot of uh, historic sites, but there's a lot of boating and fishing down there and just some really, really uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, scenery down at Pomona. And that's, um, you know, pretty close to anybody in Eastern Kansas. Mm -hmm. And if you want a different experience, if you're from Western Kansas, you can go see a whole different wooded, um, uh, lush landscape yeah. around Pomona. So yeah, it's, it's just such a, such a pretty place. And so um, we've got several more to mention, so we'll be right back. Stay with us. Twenty-one, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Welcome back. We have some gorgeous scenery behind us now. This is historic Scott Lake behind me. And this is in Scott County, surprise, surprise. This image is from stateparks.com. And I picked this one because it gives you sort of a vista, but I'm telling you, there's no photograph that captures when you turn off Highway 83 and you are driving on what appears to be flat or kind of gently rolling ground. And then all of a sudden this opens up and you've got that incredible lake underneath you and you are driving down to get to it. Um, it is mind blowing. It is just one of the most beautiful spots in Kansas and one of the most unexpected. And we keep hearing this over and over. This doesn't look like Kansas. Well, by golly, this is what Kansas looks like. And Deb, behind me, I have an amazing image of the newest addition to the Kansas State Park system. And that is the Little Jerusalem Badlands. And if you have ever been to the Badlands of South Dakota, these Neobrera chalk formations will look very familiar. Uh, and this is, again, this is the newest addition. It is a day use only park and is absolutely breathtaking. And honestly, you definitely would not think that you would find this in Kansas. And they're pretty close together. You know, I'm always bragging on my part of the state, but, but that's because we got so much cool stuff. So these are both right off Highway 83. So Again, you come to Oakley, you get off at Mittens and you get some gas and you get some food and uh, 
you know, take a little time to look at all the, um, the animal mounts that are there, tell them Deb and Michelle sent you, and then head down the highway to um, the Monument Rocks, which is not a state park, that's private property. Mm -hmm. So we always remind people to be respectful, be respectful of the state parks too, but especially that private property where people are willing to let you on, so don't take advantage of that. And then uh, Little Jerusalem's right there, and then you keep going, and you get to historic Scott Lake. And Scott Lake does have camping. It's got uh, boating and fishing and just uh, swimming and all kinds of things. And it also has a couple of really cool history sites. It has uh, Battle Canyon, which is um, the last battle of the Indian Wars in Kansas. And it has the El Cuartalejo ruins. And that is the northernmost that we know of settlement of the Pueblo people. And that is um, preserved to some extent. And there's talk of improving that site. We hope that can happen because it's a pretty significant place. But all of that, you know, the spectacular scenery, all the activities and the history right there at Historic Scott Lake. And with the Little Jerusalem uh, Badlands State Park, uh, you have day use only. And of course you do have to pay the per vehicle fee to enter. But when you're there, there are a network of trails that you are able to hike. And if you look at their website, they are still asking, even though some of our COVID restrictions are lifting, they're still asking that you promote some social distancing between family groups uh, to make sure that we stay safe and everyone can enjoy the outdoors. But you will be treated to these incredible chalk formations and they are extremely fragile. And the one thing that is very important about the chalk formations is that you stay on the trails and that they not be touched or climbed on because it can cause irreparable damage to them. And I know it's really, really difficult. You want to get that great picture or you really wanna have the kiddos um, you know, in this environment and take a great photo. But remember, when we're in our state parks, we want to leave only footprints and take behind memories and good experiences. And again, and also um, with all of our state parks, um, pack out what you pack in. So if you have trash that you, you know, you have materials you take in with you that become trash, either pack it out with you, or please make sure you use those trash receptacles and help keep our amazing natural wonders in Kansas clean. I might add too, if it's uh, if it uh, isn't enough to admonish people to stay off the rocks for uh, environmental purposes, it's not safe to climb the rocks. Yeah. Um, those, as Michelle said, those formations are fragile, which means that they break off easily, and so you don't want the kids climbing on them because it's it really isn't safe. So. Um, that's, a, that's really important. You can get some fantastic guided tours at Little Jerusalem, which I highly recommend because it's, a, it's spectacular to see them. But when you understand the geology and, and the ecosystem and all the things that go hand in hand with it, they do a wonderful job. Everybody there is so excited about that place. So their excitement really catches. And you know, Deb, piggybacking on that, not only um, do we not want to climb on these because they're fragile. I mean, what you can not only damage the rock formations, but you can injure yourself. But also, this is prime rattlesnake country. Yes, it and is. the rattlesnakes find ways to tuck into those little crevices and areas. And if you're climbing where you shouldn't be and you disturb them, and it startles them, they are gonna be more likely to take an aggressive posture. And uh, I, I myself have had a rattlesnake encounter at Monument Rocks. Um, it was, and I didn't even know it was behind me. It was underneath some scrub brush mm -hmm. and I stepped back too far. I was getting the right angle. And then all of a sudden I heard the rattle and it was letting me know, hey, you're getting a little too close. And so I had to stop and, collect myself because I'm terrified of snakes and then, you know, go back to uh, my business, but a safe distance away from Mr. Rattlesnake. 
Oh yeah, and you look at that landscape behind you, Michelle, and it's like where mm -hmm. could a snake hide? But you're right, just this little bush that's like this big, and they can find some shade and they can mm -hmm. hide. There. So yeah, be very careful. And I think there are admonitions along the way to watch for those. So um, yeah, be careful, but do do enjoy um, all our state parks have to offer. And maybe we'll do another show on some more state parks because there's so many here. Yes. We, haven't, we haven't even gotten to Wilson Lake and that's a whole nother story. It's so gorgeous, but so many more. Um, in the meantime, I'm Deb Goodrich. And I'm Michelle Martin. And we shall see you in a state park somewhere around Kansas. Kansas. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Howdy, I'm Seth Hayes and welcome to my hometown from then to now. Council Grove has a rich history as deep as the prairie tall grass. Spend the day visiting 25 historic sites or explore the unique shops and restaurants or mosey out of town along the Santa Fe Trail. You all visit my hometown, Council Grove in the heart of the Flint Hills. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're gonna find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. And we've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bee place with a great big story and we'd love to have you.